Hey, you know that this little box can turn any TV into a smart TV. And that's without all the concerns you might have, whether somebody is spying on you or what exactly is inside the code of your smart TV. It's a not well-known brand. However, the chips inside are quite popular for the people who are already into the TV boxes world. And I'm starting this review with mixed feelings. And we'll have a look at this Mi Cool M8S Pro. A very little box which seems to be ready for the very big Android TV box competition. Let's check this out. Unboxing first. Not the greatest experience though. Do not forget we take octa-core CPU and 3 gigs of RAM for within 70 US dollars. We can forgive the manufacturer for using a non-branded box. The only brand references are marked with stamps. Before I go any further, a big thank you Gearbest. They gave me the chance to try this box and once again thank you. Check out the description. You can find out how to order it at a discounted price. Items in the box. HDMI cable, remote, a charger and a manual. One thing that the box doesn't advertise is a super important and that's the availability of a Bluetooth chip. It is there. Interestingly, the remote controller seems to have the ability to learn signals from your original TV remote in order to help you using just one. I couldn't really make that work, but I anyways usually use an air mouse. The box is pretty small, especially if I compare it to what I'm still using at home, and that's the Minix Neo X8H Plus, which runs Android 4.4, that's KitKat, and was selected the best TV box of 2015. I've tried after that a few marshmallow or lollipop boxes, none of them made me switch. On top of that, I still believe that AM Logic S812 performs way better than the S905 and the S905X. The 912 is an octa-core CPU and that's what we have here. And we'll find out how it behaves. Now, I'm powering on the box. Just watch the animation and listen to the sound. Yeah, it just dropped. No fade out at all. Ungraceful cuts. Maybe a sign of a not thoroughly tested software. The boot takes a very short time. You have to manually install the app called TV Center, which is a masked version of Kodi. You can see almost no bloatware, and thumbs up to me cool for giving us the pro version of AirPin for free. Let's go through the settings. This is how long it takes for an app to get downloaded and installed. My internet bandwidth is capped at 5 megabytes per second. And here we talk about 88 megabytes of size. And this is quite a nice game. Overall, I was very impressed to see that the installation took just a couple of seconds. That's part of the optimizations that Google has made with Android Nuga. Gaming feels good, no screen shuddering, no lag, excellent performance. The box can't compete with current smartphone flagships, but can run most of the games from the Play Store.
back to the user interface. Until now, I've been using the stock launcher. And there you go with Nova Launcher. Gives you better productivity and multitasking features if you have an air mouse. Speaking of which, here is my struggle. The Minix A2 Lite has most of its buttons not working with this box. I miss the recent button the most. The main navigation buttons work just fine. I really hoped to get that thing working because the ROM build has no navigation buttons at the bottom of the screen. You may try some apps from the Play Store to overcome this limitation, but the only really good solution is to use Gravity Box with Exposed which will make you downgrade to Android Marshmallow and you're gonna need root access. We move to Antutu test. I'm stopping the video recording on the box so that it doesn't really impact the test. And listen. The sound is impacted when the load goes to 100%. Likely, if you use the AV output, that would sound better but still is something I don't experience with my older Minix. Please ignore the Minix Neo sign above the score at the end. It is wrongly displayed because I've migrated the app with titanium backup. The score is absolutely accurate though. I've been using this box for a few days now and it's fine. Performance is really good. I had a few app crashes, but nothing that left me with bad memories. And it was mostly because of the apps I've tried. The overall media experience is fantastic. Although in pure performance, this octa-core CPU does not show such a significant difference compared to my older Minix box, you can definitely see how better the newer codecs and file formats are supported by the new revision of the hardware. For its price tag, this box is an absolute hit and I can easily recommend it over most of the 905 or S905X based TV boxes. Perfect for media streaming and for gaming. If we manage to take root access, that will unlock the rest of its great potential. Make sure to follow the channel because I will show you in a quick and easy way how to get root in the next video. Until then, give me a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button.